Hannah Gross is the reliable caretaker of Bly Manor. Her responsibilities range from general housekeeping to managing staff and looking after the household. We first see Hannah when Danny Clayton, the new young American au pair, arrives to Bly Manor. Hannah is contemplative and in deep thought as she stares down a well. Miles Wingrave is next to her and he too seems a bit preoccupied. When Danny approaches the pair with Flora, both Miles and Hannah are brought out of their thoughts. Hannah apologizes to Danny, saying, Goodness, sorry, I was miles away. She continues to greet Danny warmly and leads her and the children to the manor. Throughout the show, Hannah is often lost in deep thought. She is rather disoriented and seems to be reliving old memories. This will become a huge plot point for Hannah's story and will be a huge plot twist for the show. Hannah is often seen wearing her cross as a symbol of her faith and belief in God. Not much is known about Hannah's life outside of Bly. All we really know is that she had divorced her husband and was invited to work and stay at Bly full time by the late Charlotte Wingrave. Hannah has little ties to the outside world and seems very much happy and content to stay at Bly, making her the perfect caretaker. She is an insightful, intelligent woman and a loyal friend who isn't afraid to speak her mind or stand up to bullies. Unfortunately, these wonderful qualities will lead Hannah to her demise. Hannah Gross is probably the most intuitive character on the show, especially when it comes to reading other people. She often gives very accurate and insightful readings of those around her. We see this with Owen. When Owen leaves early after preparing dinner for the children and the rest of the staff at Bly, he says he needs to go up and check on his ill mother. When Flora asks if she's doing better, he responds that she is, but Hannah is able to tell that he's putting on a brave face and later points out to Danny that while he says she's doing better, Owen has been leaving to go take care of her earlier and earlier. This later proves accurate when Owen's mother passes away after her long battle with her illness. Later, when Danny approaches Hannah to ask about Flora's strange talismans, Hannah is able to explain to her that it is Flora's way of coping and dealing with all the recent deaths. I talked about this scene in my Rebecca Gesso video, so I apologize if this is treading old grounds. Hannah explains to Danny that before Danny came to Bly, there was another au pair, a woman named Rebecca. Again, out of all the characters on the show, it is Hannah who is able to get closest to the truth regarding Rebecca Gesso. Of course, she does not know the full extent to what happened to Rebecca, but her account of what had happened to her is the most accurate. Hannah could not have known about the full sinister and bizarre situation that Rebecca was in, but she was able to perceive that Rebecca was brought low by Peter Quint. Speaking of which, Peter Quint and Hannah never really liked each other. They had very negative experiences with one another, and right from the start, Hannah is able to perceive that there was something off about him and that he was dangerous. She's more right about him than she knows, and we will circle back to this later in the video. With the children, Hannah is extremely lenient, compassionate, and protective of them. Hannah was around long before Dominic and Charlotte died and was there to witness the effects that their deaths had on their children. She was also present when Rebecca Jessel was found dead in the lake, so she's very much aware the terrible state the children were in. When the children finally began to act like normal children again, Hannah was extremely relieved. Quote, To think I used to cringe when I heard the children running through the house, screaming and kicking up a fuss, but in the weeks after Miss Jessel there, Silence had never felt so terrible. And now, when I heard them cry or scream or yell, God, it's the most beautiful sound in the world. 
While Hannah is great at reading other people, her major blind spot is ironically herself. Throughout the show, it is clear that Owen and Hannah have feelings for one another. They love to banter with one another, and the two are extremely close. She was also the one who conducted his interview, and was in charge of deciding if he would be hired. A scene that eerily echoes Rebecca Jessel's and Peter Quint's meeting and interview. Sadly, both relationships will end tragically. Rebecca and Peter, and Owen and Hannah, never get their fairy tale romance. Despite their good relationship and strong chemistry, however, Owen and Hannah never act on their romantic desires. After Owen's mother passes, it is curious that Hannah does not go to the funeral. This is a hint and a plot twist regarding Hannah, but she will explain it away, quote, I had nothing but respect for Owen's mother, but she was long gone. Dementia is a savage thing. I pay my respects in my own ways. He understands that funerals are for the living. It is up to the living to decide what they can and cannot bear. Hannah's way of paying respect is by saying prayers for those who have died, and she also lights candles in remembrance in the small chapel at Bly. Later that night, when Owen returns to Bly, the staff decide to have a bonfire, which acts as a cathartic act for those who participated. Bonfire is a word that has roots to old customs of burning old bones. This serves as a way to pay respect, but also as a way to lay down some of their own burdens. Hannah offers some words for the late Rebecca Jessel, and once again shows her compassion and empathy for others. When she and Owen finally get a chance alone, a drunk Owen muses on the past, the future, life, and death. This exchange between Hannah and Owen is very important to Hannah's story. Owen finally makes his intention more clear to Hannah, asking her to go to Paris with him while they still have time. Hannah does not get a chance to respond before Jamie interrupts the pair to take the intoxicated Owen home. But even if Hannah had the chance to respond, Hannah Gross would and could never go to Paris for she is trapped at Bly with all the other poor unfortunate souls who were unlucky enough to die on the grounds of Bly. In episode 5, Altar of the Dead, the narrator begins by saying, The housekeeper knew, more than most, that deep experience is never peaceful, and because she knew this, Ever since she called Bly home, she would always find her way back to peace within her daily routine, and it had always worked. Always. This is a great foreshadow for this shocking episode, and a lot will be revealed in this episode, making it one of my personal favorites. This episode will heavily focus on Hannah's experience and will be centered around her, so we will have to linger in this episode for a while. Hannah is again lost in thought. The scene takes place during the night of the bonfire. A drunk Owen muses on the past, the future, life, and death. Quote, We can't count on the past. That's what I learned taking care of mum. It's kind of like dementia, isn't it? I suppose I learned a lot on this. I mean, we think we have it trapped in our memories. But memories fade, or they are wrong. Any of us can die at any moment or we can forget our entire lives, which is like dying. So, then, think about it. We can't count on our future, either. No past, no future. Hannah tries to reassure him, saving that he's still young and has a future. Owen continues with his musings, and confesses to Hannah that, as horrible as it might make him sound, he is relieved that his mother has passed. Now Owen is untethered, and free to live his life again. He voices his desire to go to Paris, which catches Hannah off guard. She's clearly taken aback, and she doesn't want him to leave, but she tries to be supportive of Owen. Owen then surprises her again, 
saying that Hannah could always go to Paris with him. At first, she laughs it off. She can't imagine herself in Paris. But Owen tells her that they can go to Paris together and be whoever they want to be and live the life they want to live. Hannah seriously considers this moment. She wants to go, but Jamie interrupts, looping back to the events of the previous bonfire scene in episode 4. Now, just a heads up that this episode, episode 5, can be very disorienting for viewers because it will jump between past and present. This is very deliberate on the showrunner's part to represent Hannah's own experience with time. Hannah jumps back into an old memory, to the first time she meets Owen. She is a bit discombobulated as she relives this memory. It takes her a while, but she falls back into her original routines and scripts. The scene plays out relatively normal after initial confusion. She tells Owen that she views Bly as her home and that they're looking for good people who would like to stay for a long time. To convince her that he wouldn't run off, Owen admits that he has returned to the village to take care of his ailing mother, who is suffering from dementia. Owen brings up the writings of Thomas Merton, an American monk with unique thoughts on transcendence and another state of being. Owen brings this up because it has helped him better cope and understand his own mother's state of dementia. Their conversation is cut short by an unknown distant voice. Hannah reluctantly excuses herself to go to the other room. As she goes through the doors out of the kitchen, she finds herself in the master bedroom, a physical impossibility. This catches her off guard, and it is obvious that she has fallen into another memory. Her clothes are now different, and the bedroom is beautifully decorated. Setting this in the past, the room is still decorated, meaning that Charlotte and Dominic are still alive. An unknown woman tells Hannah that the Wingraves have arrived, and like before, a confused Hannah falls back on her routine script and starts to put the finishing touches to the room before leaving to meet the Wingraves. When the Wingraves have gone into the house, Hannah asks Peter Quint if he will bring their luggage in directly. He pauses for a smoke before replying, immediately. Hannah is unsettled by this response and awkwardly returns to the house, but as she opens the door again, she's transported into another memory. This memory is set during nighttime. Hannah enters, and upon seeing the house empty, immediately leaves Bly. She takes a few steps away from the house, before suddenly wailing out in anguish. A startled and concerned Charlotte Wingrave checks up on Hannah. Hannah is caught off guard and is embarrassed with her emotional outburst. She confesses to Charlotte that Sam, her husband, had left her for someone else, leaving Hannah devastated. Charlotte warmly offers to drive her home, or to stay at Bly forever if Hannah wants to. This is meant as a warm and compassionate gesture from Charlotte, but it will foreshadow Hannah's tragic fate at Bly. Hannah loses herself in another memory. A more recent one, Miles looks much like he currently does. Hannah finds herself outside. She sees Miles walking towards Jamie, who is on a ladder. He then starts to shake the ladder with Jamie still on it, causing her to be very upset with him. Both Jamie and Hannah reprimand Miles for doing this, but Miles is completely unfazed and strolls off. Hannah and Jamie can only watch as Miles walks away but a ringing and a pain in her neck causes Hannah to snap her head painfully backwards. With this, she's taken into another memory. It is of her and Owen by the bonfire. Once again, Owen is contemplating life and death like he did in the previous scene. But this time, the scene plays out differently, with Hannah trying to compare moments in life to chapters in a book or markers on a page. The scene then jumps again to the past. Rebecca is alive, and she is fighting with Peter in the classroom. Hannah eavesdrops, and hears a part of their argument. Peter, however, catches Hannah watching, so Hannah returns to vacuuming. He approaches her menacingly, and kicks off the vacuum, and tells her, Honestly, Hannah, 
you should give the vacuum a rest and live a little before walking off. Hannah is shaken by this exchange and feels intimidated by him, but out of the corner of her eye, she notices a large crack in the red wall. It is large and foreboding. As she goes to investigate this strange crack, she is brought to another memory. It is dark and she hears someone rummaging through the Wingrave's belongings in the forbidden wing of the manor. She finds Peter is stealing Charlotte's necklace. He lies to her and tells her that he was getting it for Henry Wingrave. Hannah is not fooled and confronts him about his thievery. Peter tries to convince her and says, it's a mistake, isn't it? Thinking that they're your family and that this is your house. There's them and then there's us, Hannah. We're the help. What do you suppose could happen when you're too old to mop? What? You think Henry will take care of you? Or what? The kids? Do you know how many housekeepers who stay on after they retire? Their lives go on, Hannah leaving honest people like us in its wake. Hannah scoffs at this honest people remark and is unmoved by his rhetoric. She demands the necklace back, and Peter coldly says, You know, you should be nicer to me, Hannah. I mean, one word from me, and you'd be thrown out with nothing but your week's wages. Hannah is not intimidated and responds, This is my home, Peter Quint. You'll leave long before I do. As he storms off, Hannah sees the mysterious crack again, now in the master bedroom. The scene abruptly cuts to the crack in the stone. Water can be heard dripping ominously. A sequence of scenes happening quickly flashes by. Muddy footprints leading to the lake, and Rebecca Jessel about to enter the water. Then Hannah finds herself back with Owen, from when she first interviewed him all those years ago. Hannah is confused and asks why they're doing this again, to which Owen just simply replies, you tell me. He goes back into his usual script dialogue, and as confused as Hannah is, she does fall back into their conversation, and Owen interrogates Hannah about Miles and his cruelty. Hannah responds that he hasn't quite been himself since his parents died, but that Miles was a good boy. Owen then unexpectedly shouts, Miles Dominic Wingrave. This leads into Hannah's own memory of her shouting after Miles when she catches him smoking. She gently chastises him, but once again, he just laughs it off and just says, honestly, Hannah, before walking away. She runs after him, but is abruptly brought into another memory She's in the chapel this time, and Charlotte is there. A candle is lit, and Charlotte explains that she had lit the candle for Sam, Hannah's ex-husband. A bewildered Hannah questions why she had lit a candle for the living, and Charlotte gently tells Hannah that she lit the candle because Sam is gone. Charlotte then asks if Hannah would become a live-in housekeeper. She can sell her home and move to Bly, and that way she could save up some money and start fresh without her ex-husband. But Hannah seems unable to accept that he has truly left her. This leads Charlotte to ponder out loud, quote, It's funny, marriage is like religion in a way. You are told to have blind faith in God, even though you can't see him. And you're told to have blind faith in your husband, even if you hardly ever see him. But is that realistic? How long can you actually believe in something, I mean truly believe in it, without seeing it? They both have their limits in that regard. Hannah counters that the alternative is worse. Not believing in anything would be unbearable for her. She admits that she still loves Sam and she can't move on. The episode still has a lot of flashbacks, but those were mostly covered in my Rebecca Gesso video, so again, please go check that out as well. Near the end of the episode, Hannah is once brought again back into the interview memory with Owen. This time, however, both Owen and Hannah are irritated at replaying this memory. Owen tries to get Hannah to admit 
to it being a memory and hinting at why this keeps happening. He hints to her that he's really not here, he's a part of her, and that he's just merely playing a part for her benefit. Hannah tries to fall back into their usual conversation, and confides in him that it is strange that she is now falling into other people's memories. This again pertains to Hannah being able to see Rebecca and Peter's memories. For a brief moment, Hannah doesn't even seem to remember who Rebecca is and does not recognize her because she, in a sense, have not met Rebecca yet due to jumping backwards and forwards so many times. Hannah is obviously lost in her own memories and isn't able to anchor herself in time, so Owen tries to bring her to the present by telling her that the year is 1987. Dominic, Charlotte, Rebecca are all dead and Peter Quint has gone missing. Laura is eight and something is very wrong with Miles. This triggers a more recent memory, a painful one that Hannah has been avoiding this whole time. After Hannah catches Miles smoking again, she follows him into the woods and to her surprise, she sees Peter Quint. Miles is also there near the well. She calls out to Peter to get away from Miles, but Miles is strangely in a trance and Peter seemingly has full control of him. It is revealed to Hannah and the audience that Peter had been controlling Miles, explaining his strange behavior throughout the show. Hannah now knows that Peter is dead and has sporadically been possessing the young boy. But before she can act on these revelations, Peter, using Miles' body, pushes Hannah down the well. She lands on her neck and it snaps. In her final moments, she sees the crack in the stone at the bottom of the well. This finally explains the mysterious crack in the walls that she's been seeing all over Bly. This also loops back to the first episode when Danny arrives to Bly. Hannah had died seconds earlier and her spirit had manifested and has been haunting Bly the whole time. Explaining why she sometimes disappears, why she's never hungry, and why she finds herself so discombobulated most of the time. She has been tucking herself away in her memories, and has even been stumbling into other people's memories. Hannah is unique because out of all the other spirits who are trapped at Bly, she does not know, or she chooses not to know, that she is dead. She's very much trapped at Bly, like the rest of them. But the belief that she is still alive allows her to remain partially in the world of the living, interacting with other living people and the world around her. The crack in the walls was first seen in episode 2. It was very small and in the kitchen, or at least Hannah thought she saw it in the kitchen. But when Jamie goes to check up on it later, by Hannah's request, it had disappeared. This is because only Hannah can see the crack. The crack is a buried memory, a truth that has been hidden, or something that Hannah can't bring herself to accept. But as Hannah will try to deny the truth even to herself, the crack will show itself to her more and more persistent and more foreboding as time goes by. Hannah's beliefs are being tested, and like when her husband left her, she is in denial. She tucks herself away in old memories to forget, only to re-emerge as if nothing had happened. Seems like one of her favorite memories involves Owen and Charlotte. Charlotte was more than an employer to Hannah. She was a dear friend who helped her in her time of need. So it is not strange that Hannah would find herself back in old memories talking to Charlotte. And Owen, well, Hannah loved him. So she keeps reliving the memory of their first meeting. It is also her manifestation of Owen that tries to ground her in reality. This manifestation of Owen acts more like a guide and is trying to get Hannah to come to the realization that she is dead. The episode ends bitterly when Hannah finds herself in another memory with Owen. It is the bonfire scene again. Owen asks if she would go to Paris with him. This time, she accepts, and she is happy with her decision. But as she looks up at him for his response, Owen is about to leave with Jamie. She begs them to stop, but they continue on, playing out their original scripts. Hannah tries to follow after them, but they disappear into the night. Hannah is left heartbroken, alone and scared, and she tries to reassure herself, reciting her name, the year, and where she is, just like how her manifestation of Owen had done in the previous memories. 
except now Hannah is left to do it alone. Even after revelations of her own death, Hannah re-emerges in the world of the living, seemingly again unaware that she has died, perhaps hinting that Hannah has gone through this process many many times before. This might be all some part of a grim cycle of Hannah forgetting, remembering, and forgetting again. Not unlike Owen's mother's experience with dementia, it is a cruel irony that Owen loses his mother to dementia, and the woman he loves would also suffer a fate that eerily mimics dementia. Like Owen says, we can't count on our future either. No past, no future. Hannah exists in a cycle where her past and present are seemingly spilling into each other, making it hard for Hannah to remember where and when she is. In episode 7, The Two Faces Part 2, Peter Quint becomes fed up with Hannah's affliction. So while possessing Miles' body, Peter sets out to remind her once and for all that Hannah is dead. He lures her to the well, where he pushed and killed her. He muses that she reminds him of someone, quote, I was thinking of a cartoon I used to watch when I was little, Wiley Coyote. Wiley Coyote, remember those? It would happen all the time. He would run off a cliff, straight off it, and he'd keep on going. That's you. That's who you remind me of, Hannah. You just went off that cliff, and you just kept going. Carrying on, cleaning the house, dreaming up new outfits and earrings, the whole thing. But the thing is, when Wiley Coyote looked down, then he'd fall. But only when he looked down. You just need to look down, Hannah. Then you could stop this charade. Just fall already into whatever dream you like while your face melts away like some forgotten memory. He makes Hannah look down into the well, to which she sees her own broken body at the bottom of it. She once again remembers what had happened to her and she disappears, falling into another memory, the one with Owen. She's interviewing him again, except this time she does remember her present circumstances and breaks down into tears. She finally accepts that she is dead, and with that final acceptance, Owen disappears. Hannah no longer needs Owen to ground herself in memories. Upon her acceptance of death, she can no longer rely on these old memories, and must come to terms with it alone. In the final episode of the show, The Beast in the Jungle, Hannah is once again in the memory with Owen. This time, she's very much aware that she's dead. She's also calm and composed. She's talking to Owen, but it seems like she's just talking out loud with him. She knows that that's not really him, but a manifestation of him that she dreamt up to keep herself company. She knows the children and the others are still alive at Bly and are in grave danger, but she does not know how she can help, so she tucks herself away with Owen and muses on how much she had loved him. She confesses to him that she would have very much liked to have built a life away from Bly with him. She admits that this is her favorite memory to linger in, the first day she met Owen Sharma. Owen counters that she cannot linger in this memory. If she truly loved him, she must leave this wonderful memories of him to return to the world of the living, to warn him about the dangers of the lady in the lake and to save the children from Peter Quint. Hannah is terrified of leaving because she does not know what will become of her when she leaves her memories to return to Bly. Owen just tells her, quote, Be brave in death, Hannah. We both know you're not so selfish to remain hidden in a memory. With those words from Owen, Hannah summons her courage and returns to the world of the living. She immediately tries to stop Viola, the lady in the lake, she stands in front of her and demands her to stop, but Viola passes right through Hannah. Unable to help Danny, Hannah appears to Owen and Jamie. She is distraught that they have returned to Bly, but alerts them to the lake. This act from Hannah saves Henry Wingrave's life. Henry had been strangled by Viola when he tried to take Flora from her. Hovering between life and death, Henry is able to see and hear Hannah, who tells him, quote, when he checks the well, please tell Owen I'm sorry. Tell him I love him. And the rest, 
well, it's just... Before Hannah can finish her final words, Henry is brought back to life by Owen's CPR, and Hannah, simultaneously, is freed from Bly when Danny Clayton accepts Viola into herself. Hannah Gross disappears into the unknown. Hannah's final words are of love for Owen and a clever reference to the haunting of Hill House, where Eleanor, as a goodbye to her siblings, tells them, quote, I love you completely, and you loved me the same, that's all. The rest is confetti. Both Nell and Hannah's last words are to those they loved in life and a celebration of their time together. The next day, Owen finds Hannah's body in the well. He helps with the effort to retrieve her body and rides with her to the coroner where he carefully cleans her himself with soaps of lavender. He then stayed at her side till she was buried. Sadly, Owen had to bury two women he loved in a span of a few days. He lights a final candle for Hannah and he departs Bly. Owen does go to Paris where he sets up his own restaurant called A Batter Place, a pun that Hannah would have groaned at but loved. He has a large framed picture of her hanging in the restaurant wall. Hannah Gross's story serves as a reminder to the living to remember to live while you still have a chance. Missed opportunities may never come again. Hannah spent most of her life taking care of others. It was her job after all, but it went beyond that. What Peter had said to her regarding Bly not being her home and that the Windgraves were not her family may have truth in it. But like a comforting routine, Hannah chose to stay at Bly to care for the Windgraves because it brought her peace and serenity. But it came at a cost. She never went on new adventures and will never get a chance to. At the same time, her story is not all doom and gloom. As stated before, she was happy at Bly, and it is clear that the Wingraves, especially Charlotte, saw her more than just an employee. Charlotte treated Hannah like a friend. Hannah loved the Wingraves in return, and took great pride in Bly Manor. She also would have never met Owen if she had never come to Bly. So her story is also about cherishing the memories you do have, but not to let life slip away in your daily routines. And in a way, Hannah did get to go to Paris with Owen at his restaurant, and memories of their time together is cherished deeply by the man she loved in life. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the like button and subscribe, and leave a comment. Thanks again.